I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will find the equation of a polynomial function using finite difference method. The equation here is determine equation of a polynomial from the given set of points on it. We are given six set of points x and y coordinates being 1 minus 34, 2 minus 42, 3 minus 38, 4 minus 16, 5, 36, 106. In this particular video, I am going to follow each and every step in the book. Solve the question, find the polynomial equation. But as we move on to the next and then the next video, uh, I am going to show you how to reduce the number of steps and efficiently find equation of a polynomial in just half the time. Right? So that is very interesting to note. So I like you to understand first the whole process and then see how we can reduce on steps and find equation of polynomials very easily in much lesser steps. Okay, let us follow finite difference that is y2 minus y1. So first let me find first finite difference. We are given successive values of coordinates x changes just by 1 so we can do y2 minus y1 and find first difference minus 42 minus 34 will give us so 12 take away that becomes positive when you do right so you get a smaller negative number right which is minus 8 so minus 42 minus of minus 34 gives you minus 8 right now minus 38 minus of minus 42 that becomes plus right so we get 4 plus minus 36 minus of minus 38 that is as good as 38 minus 16 that gives us 22 now 16 minus minus 16 means 6 I mean 30 minus minus 16 means 30 plus 16 so that is 46 and now 106 minus 30 6 take away 0 is 6 10 take away 3 is 7 so we get first difference which is not constant. Now let us find the second difference. We know that the polynomial is not linear, right? So we know polynomial is not linear. Now let's find the second difference. Second time we are doing the same process. 4 minus minus 8 gives us 12. 22 minus 4 gives us 18. 46 minus 12 that is 24 and 76 minus 46 means 30 right now second difference is also not constant so we'll continue this process till we get a constant finite difference right so this time let us do 18 minus 12 which is 6 24 minus 18 is 6 30 minus 24 is 6 what we find here is that the third finite difference is constant. Now what does that mean? Third finite difference constant means cubic function, right? That means you could write function f of x of degree 3, right? Third finite difference is constant. So the general equation will be ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d. That is a general cubic equation. Now in this equation, we need to find A, B, C and D, four unknowns. To find four unknowns, we need to start with four different equations, right? So we need four equations, so we'll consider these four points to write four equations, right? So let us write down these equations one by one. First, let us substitute x values 1, y value for f of 1 as minus 34. So the first equation we can write as what is f of 1 equals to, right? So f of 1 means f of 1 we know is minus 34. Let me write minus 34 first and then we'll write 1 here. If I substitute all these x values as 1, I get what? I get a plus b plus c plus d, right? That is f of 1. Now let us see what is f of 2. f of 2 will be equals to minus 42. That is given to us. And from the equation, if I write 2 here, 2 cube is 8, right? So we get 8a. 2 squared is 4, so plus 4b. 
2 times c plus d. Now f of 3 will be equals to minus 38. We are going to replace x with 3. 3 cube is 27, so it will be 27a plus 3 square is 9 and 3 times c plus d. 1, 2, 3, 4. We need one more point, f4 should be equals to 4 is minus 16 is given to us, right? That's the data point. Now we'll substitute 4 here. 4 cube is 64. 4 square is 16 plus 4c plus d, right? So these are four equations to start with. Let's number them. 1, 2, 4, right? So we have these equations as 1, 2, it's good to number so that we can communicate effectively, right? These are four equations. You can clearly see that if I subtract one from the other, we'll get rid of d. Second, you should always see if the values of x are 1, 2, 3, 4, then always we are going to get the same set of equations on the right side. You see, always you'll get a 8a, 27a, 64a, since these are 1 cube, 2 cube, 3 cube, 4 cube, right? Coefficients of b are going to be 1, 4, 9, 16. That is to say, 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, 4 square. And coefficient c will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Perfect. And d is like this. So effectively, you will always follow exactly the same method to get the result. So now what we'll do is 2 minus 1, 3 minus 2, 4 minus 3. So 1 by 1 will do 2 minus 1. So when I say 2 minus 1, means equation 2 take away equation 1. So in that process, d minus d is 0. So we'll be left with equations with three variables. So let's write down these equations. So when I do minus 42 minus 34, what do I get? I get minus 8. That is the first difference. So we get minus 8 equals 2. And when you do this, 8 minus 1. 7, right? 7, 8. 4 minus 1 plus 3b. 2c minus 1c is just c. d minus d is 0. So these equations, we'll call them 5, 6, 7. We'll get 3 of them, right? So 5. Now let's do 3 minus 2. So we have to, you know, continue with this process. So that minus this is effectively 4, right? Equals to as 27 minus 8, which is going to give us 19. And then 9 minus 4 is 5, plus C, right? And that is our equation number 6. Now let's do equation 4 minus 3, right? So this is a very standard method, and these are the steps to be followed. When you do 4 minus 3, it's minus 16 minus 38 will be 22. Right? So it's good to confirm because, you know, these are correct calculations, right? And then, let's move here, 64 minus 27, which is 37, right? So we get 37A. You can use calculator, right? 16 minus 9 is 7. Plus C equals to 22, right? So let me write down this equation number as 7. So we got three equations now. But this time, we have eliminated D, and now we have three variables, three equations to solve. So we'll continue this difference of equations this time, but this time we'll do 6 minus 5 and 7 minus 6, correct? I'm not writing this, but now that indicates difference, right, which we, nomenclature, which we have used earlier also. So if I do 6 minus 5, then 4 minus 8 will be plus 12, right? So plus 12. So I'm getting one equation here, which is 12 equals 2. Now we'll do 19 minus 7, which is also 12, right? So it is 12a. 5 minus b is 2b plus 2b. Now we have eliminated c. Do you see that? So by doing so, we have eliminated c. And now we are left with equation with a and b. I could simplify this a bit. So let me write this equation as dividing each number by 2, 6 equals 2, 6a plus b, right? So that is my equation number 8. So I'm calling this as my equation 8. Now let us do 
7 minus 6, 22 minus 4. So what we should get here is the number here, right? Earlier we got that number 12. So we correlate all these things. 22 minus 4, right? 18, 22 minus 4. It kind of ensures that your calculations are correct. Correct? So now we do 37, uh, yeah, 37 minus 19. So 37 minus 19, if you take away 20, you get 17. So it will be one more, that is 18, right? So you get 18A. 7 minus 2 is 2B, right? 2B. C minus C is 0. Now here also I can divide each by 2. Simplify a bit. Wherever you can, just simplify. And then we'll call this as our equation number 9. It is good to move slowly like I'm moving because there are a lot of calculations to be done here. Okay, now let's find the difference between these two. In that process, we'll eliminate it. B will be eliminated, right? So 9A minus 6A, and this is 9 minus 6. 9 minus 6 is 3, equals to 9A minus 6A is 3A, right? So 3 equals to 3A means that you can divide by 3, so A is equals to 1. So we get one of our which is the leading coefficient right one of our coefficients which is a equals to one we got now we will move backwards and get other values since we know a is one we can substitute a back into one of our equations and find what b is right so i'm calling this as my equation number 10 right 10. now I'll substitute a equals to one in one of my equations so we can take this equation for example a as 1. So if I write a as 1 here then I get 9 equals to 9 plus b right so that means b is 0 perfect. So I'm substituting a equals to 1 in equation 9 right so we write we do 10 in 9 right which really means I'm substituting a equals to 1 here so if I do that then what do I get? Okay, let me continue this place here itself. I'm writing A as 1. So I get 9 equals to 9 times 1 plus B. And that gives me B is equals to 0, right? So I get B as 0 as my value, correct? So I have B equals to 0. I'm calling this as my equation 11, right? Now to find C, what should we do? We can substitute both A and B in one of our equations and find C, right? So, so let's substitute those 10 and 11, let me substitute 10 and 11 this time, both in one of these equations. Uh, equation number 5 is simpler. So let me put it in equation number 5. And in that case, what do I get? I'll substitute A as 1, B as 0, right? So let us see what do we get. So if B is 0, A is 1, we get minus 8 equals to 7 plus 0 plus C, right? So from here, we can calculate what C is c will be equals to minus 8 minus 7 that is c and that is clearly minus 15 right so we get value of c as minus 15 right so we get c equals to minus 15 and let me call this as equation 12 okay now we know a b and c we can substitute them in equation 1 and find d right so so what we'll do now is we'll substitute equation 10 11 and 12 in our equation number 1 okay so that is what we are going to do so that is the equation so we'll write minus 34 equals to a is 1 b is 0 c is minus 15 and plus d so from here we can find what d is so d will be minus 34 and we'll take minus 14 on the other side so plus 40 equals to d and when you do that you get what you get 20 minus right minus 20 is the value of d right so d is minus 20. do you see how in simple steps well there are too many of them we can get all the values a b c and d once we get all the values we can write our function so now we say that f of x is equals to a is 1, so we'll write 1 here, so x cube. b is 0, so this coefficient is 0, so x squared term is not there. c for us is, is minus 15, so I'll write minus 15x now, minus 15x. 
and d we calculated as minus 20 so we'll write minus 20 i mean minus 20 for d right so that gives us the final answer so this polynomial represents the data given to us and that is how we will actually solve each and every question where we need to find polynomial function from finite difference these are too many steps suppose if you have a fourth degree equation then you will be working with five equations at the same time and it will take more than a page to complete the answer here are a few things which you could think about one is the leading coefficient a we can easily find leading coefficient a from the finite difference and that is what I'm going to teach you here so what is a equals to and how is it related with the finite difference a is equal to the finite difference let us say nth finite difference is constant divided by n factorial right in our case third finite difference is constant which was 6 right so we could write this as 6 divided by third n is 3 so 3 factorial meaning of factorial is 3 times 2 times 1 so 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1 3 times 2 is 6 6 times 1 is 6 6 divided by 6 is 1 right so straight away from the finite difference we get the value of a right which confirms from our value of a which we just calculated do you get the idea right so once you find the finite difference you can actually find the value of a and in this equation substitute a then you are left with only three coefficients to find b c and d so you have to work with three equations not four so you know a leading coefficient itself and you're working with three equations it should take much lesser time for you to find the right answer I hope you understand and appreciate it right now for some of you who might you know let me go back to this formula a is equals to finite difference nth finite difference divided by n factorial right so we have written nth finite difference over n factorial what is n factorial n factorial is equals to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times so on till 1 right so if it is 3 factorial it is 3 times 2 times 1 if it is 4 factorial it means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 <laughs> likewise correct I hope that helps in the next video I'm going to use the value of a from the finite difference I also have few examples which are really I've done for you to understand how finite difference and leading coefficient are connected okay so in next example I will take the connection between the finite difference and the leading coefficient and show you solution in half the steps I hope you understand and appreciate it I'm Anil Kumar you can subscribe to my videos and learn a lot thank you and all the best